All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Asus. Um, this is a Toughbook model FX706H or the full model FX706HCB-ES51. All right, we're going to be using a JIS1 or J1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. You want to keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like this on my desk in the pattern I remove them. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four on the back here it looks like. And then we got three here and then four more down here. If I remember correctly on these tough book models, these corner screws like to stay in place with a little washer or something. Um, so keep that in mind. You might not have to pull all the screws out from there spots after you undo them okay and those washers tend to help like pop start the case popping apart from the body let's see okay so let's go ahead and continue getting all these screws out this one, this one. all right make sure not to lose the screws so far all the screws seem to be about the same length but these ones i'm sure are going to be different length Okay, so this screw comes out. Is it just one screw or is it none on this model? Let's see. I don't know. Some some of them they designed to look similar, but then they behave differently. So we'll find out once we get to that last screw. Okay, this screw is a little bit difficult to undo. There we go. Last one. And just like I thought. So this one screw stays in place. And as you undo it, it actually separates the casing a little bit. So it gives you a starting starting gap over here, okay? So now that we got that started, we're gonna carefully open up the screen. Make sure obviously that the computer's off. Um, usually I don't need this gap because what I do is I get my fingernails in the like gap between this and there. And then I'll push with my thumb on the palm rest. Don't push on the touchpad, just the palm rest. And you can see how easily it pops out. So if I were to start on this side without that little starting clip, you can see I can already get my fingernails in there and then pop that out. So it's very useful to have fingernails. Some people kind of like um, ask me why I have fingernails, just use pry tools, whatever, but they work way better than pry tools. All right, so anyways, we're gonna pull on this. You can see we have this gap formed. So I'll push with my thumb down here and I'll pull up with my fingers and then I'll just slide my fingernail along there. You can see it popped up really easily. Same thing over here, push down with my thumb, pull up with my fingers here, and then I'll just slide my fingernail in here and there you go, look how easily it pops up. All right, once you got that front and the sides up, we should be able to kind of just wiggle this, but if it doesn't come out, we might have to go around and see if we can pry it. Okay, so it's not really coming out, so let's go ahead and see here. Okay, um, it's hard to tell where the um, casing starts, but it looks like it goes along this kind of shape pattern here. So I'm gonna pull up with my fingernails there and see if we can help pull it along. Um, I'm gonna have to do it sideways. I was trying to give you guys a better viewing angle, but it makes it so it's a lot more difficult. So let's see. So I'm basically pushing with my thumb here and pulling up there as I kind of like also pull here. Okay, and push with my thumb down and pull up with my fingers there. Um, you can see this casing is being a little bit tricky, but uh, gotta take it slow. Um, so that way you don't break any of the clips if possible. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go on this side and do the same thing. Okay. You can feel those clips unlatching. All right, and then this middle part, for some reason, is stuck really strong. So let's see how we're gonna get that out. Okay, I'm gonna hold on to the bottom part and hold the top, and I'm gonna kind of pull it side to side. Sometimes that's what needs to be done to undo those clips, and there we go. Okay, so here we go. We got the bottom cover off. These are the two clips that were being a little extra stubborn. And you can see how they kind of, hopefully you can see how they clip in there, okay? So it's indented and it clips in there. There's two spots. All right, so there we go. That's the bottom case cover removed. Uh, we need to upgrade the, or sorry, replace the SSD because the built-in one has failed. And hopefully it's easy to access. It looks like it's under this, okay? What's all this stuff? Just to hide the RAM slots? Okay. Anyways, let's get a thumbnail. I'm going to line this up. Okay, and here you can see all that's inside. You got two speakers, you got the battery here. This battery model, oh, they covered it with some tape. Let me see if I can peel this out just to show you. 
usually I don't like to do this kind of stuff since I don't need to work on this I don't want to risk damaging anything but let's see this part like finding the battery model number is kind of important so going forward in the future if this ever needs a new battery this information will be nice to have all right as you can see I'm kind of like rolling the adhesive off you don't want to pull it straight up because you don't want to separate layers of the battery okay so here's the battery model number hopefully you can see it b31n1726 all right b31n1726 there's the battery model number and we're gonna stick this back down and try and get it all flat again there we go all right i don't want to rip everything out but i kind of just want to let you guys see here's the battery connector here very standard grab there wiggle and pull it out okay if you're not sure how to do that i have videos showing that on my other um other repairs here you can see this is another ram slot it's only using one on this side so you do have one available slot here um, we're going to go ahead and pull these two tabs to the side and pop the stick of RAM up. Let's see if we can figure out. We can't see what kind of RAM this is, but I believe, let me see here. So I have this uh, PC4 stick of RAM and looks like it lines up. So this is some kind of DDR4 or PC4 stick of RAM. Okay, so yeah, if you need to upgrade or replace it, keep that in mind. It's DDR4 or PC4. Speed is probably acceptable for all different types on this, but not guaranteed. There's a second M.2 PCIe MVME slot here. There's one screw, undo that and you can take that out. And yeah, so if you wanna add a second hard drive or SSD, there it is. Okay, we got all these connectors here. I'm gonna quickly go over. This looks like a um, keyboard backlight connector with the flip latch to just make it easy to pull out. Okay, you flip that latch and then you can pull that cable out, but make sure that's in. Okay, you got this looks like the keyboard connector. Same thing, flip latch. Um, there's two connectors here. Uh, I believe this one is the touchpad or trackpad and then this one probably goes over to this USB port here. Okay, you got a speaker here with the wire running along underneath. Um, you got one wireless antenna going over here, and then it connects probably just under here. Why do they have all these dumb tabs here stuck down with tape? Okay, uh, where's that wireless antenna going? I don't see where the wireless card is. It might be underneath the SSD here. Um, you got the other speaker wire going over here. These speakers aren't held down with anything, um, you can see. So it's just the rubber that's holding it in place. Actually, the speaker connects to the motherboard here, and this red and black wire is just going to the other speaker. You got one fan connector here, and uh, another fan connector right there. You got the DC jack charge port connector here. It looks like it's easy to remove. Just undo these screws holding the hinge in place, open it up. Um, usually what I do is I open the laptop a little, undo the screws, and then when I close it, this will stick up a little and I can pull it back. Just be careful you don't open it too far that it hits like plastic and stuff back here and damages it. Then you should be able to pull that charge port out. All right. Um, there's a little connector here, which I'm pretty sure is for the power button. Um, obviously you have these two, uh, GPU here, CPU here. They're both soldered to the logic board or motherboard, so you can't upgrade or replace them. Um, you got the LCD LVDS connector right here. If you're going to mess with this connector, make sure that you disconnect the battery, open the laptop, and press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds before you do that. All right. And what else do we got? Okay, battery, obviously. Um, I think I already mentioned everything else. We are going to go ahead and remove the SSD here, but this looks really dusty here and here. So I'm going to clean that out, and I'll be back. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So we cleaned out the fans and also the bottom cover. Also, um, as you can see, this one screw is held in place with a little plastic washer. Okay. And yeah, you can see the fans are much cleaner now. Anyways, let's go ahead and pull the SSD out here. Okay. It better not be another one of those intel obtain things all right we got another screw here we're gonna undo this screw all right looks like they put some double stick adhesive there that's kind of peeling up all right after we remove that screw we can slightly lift this up and then pull this back and okay this is just a little sleeve that goes on top 
All right, so we'll set that out of the way. We'll get the SSD and here it is. All right, I don't think I need to peel this um, thermal pad thingy off. Yeah, it's not gonna come off anyways, but uh, yeah, so I can't even tell what kind of SSD this is because they covered it with this thing. Um, I see a, like a label under there. So probably the brand and stuff is there. Anyways, that's beside the point. We got to change out this SSD. Oh, and I was right. The wireless card is under here. There's a thermal pad on top that connects to the SSD. I think that's kind of a dumb design, but okay, whatever. Their, their choice, they do what they want. I don't know. A lot of these companies make terrible design choices, I feel. Okay. Anyways, I'm not a hardware design manufacturer or whatever, but I would think the people that design hardware should know that it's a bad design. Anyways, we got this crucial uh, P5 Plus, one terabyte SSD. We're gonna get that in there. I'm gonna put this back down into place. Make sure that it goes in behind. There's this raised circle in the middle. You wanna make sure that it's not resting on top of that because if you screw that down, on top of that, it's going to punch a hole through your the back of your SSD, and yeah, your SSD is going to be damaged. So, oops, what I should do is I should slide that um, aluminum thingy back on top. This, not really going to save your SSD, so <laughs> I don't know why they have that there, but okay, whatever. Let's go ahead and put that back on. Honestly, I don't know, it to me, from what I've been seeing... The SSDs that have the most cooling are the SSDs that fail the most often. So I don't know what to say about that, but all the SSDs in laptops, at least the ones that come with laptops that I've seen, not the aftermarket ones, all the ones that have like some heat shield pad, whatever thing, like this kind of stuff that's on it, I see them all fail. So I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know if that causes it to fail or... I don't know. Honestly, I feel it makes it heat unevenly and then it causes it to fail. But I mean, I could be wrong. I don't know. But uh, I'm just going based on the patterns I've seen. The SSDs with those heat pads, heat spreaders, heat shields. I always see those ones fail. And I don't think they're always running faster. So I don't think they're taking more heat. I don't know. Anyways, very simple install, very simple upgrade. We're going to go ahead and put this cover back on. Just line everything back up. Click it all back down, okay? You might have to hold it up at an angle to double check and make sure everything looks like it's clicking in right. All right, these ones could be a little bit tricky to get in. Come on, why isn't it clicking? Click in there, there we go, okay. There we go, make sure, oh, it sounds like some plastic is loose in there. We don't want that rolling around. All right, I think one of these clips, because they're a little bit weird, probably broke off. But okay, I don't hear any loose stuff rattling, so we should be good. We're gonna go ahead and go around the edges here and push. And I'm pushing down and in towards the middle at the same time. Um, so yeah, because that's the way the clips go. We got this screw. I'm gonna undo it and then tighten it down. All right, so that's good. Let's go ahead and give a quick look around the edges, make sure everything's locked in tight and then let's get all the rest of the screws back in and start the windows install um, if you're wondering how to install windows on this um, if it's like most asus uh, asus asus whatever however you want to pronounce it laptops what you do is you press f2 or delete on boot and then i believe it's f7 to enter the boot menu or you can just you'll visibly see the boot menu that you can select um, but anyways, other than that, that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. And if, it, um, if you can't contribute that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well. All right, so yeah, you're welcome to stay as I get all these screws back in. I'm going to start the Windows install just so you can see that process. But other than that, that's pretty much it. I didn't see a BIOS or CMOS RTC real-time clock battery on this, 
Um, so chances are it uses the main battery as that BIOS battery, but sometimes the BIOS battery can just be hidden somewhere weird. So yeah, I didn't want to disconnect the battery because a lot of times they do connect that. It won't uh, cause you to lose any data, but if the customer changed any of the default BIOS settings to something else, then if it resets to the default, it can sometimes cause some issues. So that's why I don't usually disconnect the battery unless I really need to. Okay, we'll flip this guy over. Okay, open this up. So the actual model is Asus or Asus Tough Gaming F17. All right, and yeah, I, I read somewhere or heard somewhere that the brand is supposed to be like um, Pegasus. So technically the name is Asus. I don't know, but that sounds really weird. <laughs> so... I just call it ASUS. Anyways, we'll plug that in, turn that on. Again, we'll press F2 or delete. All right, then we get this menu. Oh, they're only on 12% battery. I'm gonna have to plug it in. And then actually the boot menu is F8. So we'll press F8. I can see the SanDisk Cruiser fit. We'll press enter. And then we'll do the Windows 10 install. And that's pretty much it. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this spike.